Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah Looking clean, I am rocking this 20 pound thobe Yes indeed Smile to Jannah <laughs> I'm sure you guys were waiting and were excited for the debate of Muhammad Hijab and Lars Goulet in Norway on the apt topic of liberalism Hmm, looks like a professional setup. Good camera work, decent lighting. Hijab, make sure you behave yourself, yeah? Can someone please explain to me why this guy has turned up dressed as Willy Wonka? All right, there seems to be a good turnout. This guy's decided to come in with a traffic cone on his head. And this guy's managed to sneak in his own recliner. Nice. Now, you know the debate's going to be interesting when the moderator is forced to say, Okay, let's stop the penis talk now and go on. <laughs> guys, the debate was over three hours. If you, like me, fell asleep when you tried to watch it, and understand the big words hijab was using. Wait a minute, now you're using too many words. For us simple folk, I'm gonna break it down. This bloke right here, Lars Goulet, thank you very much, bigs up liberalism and claims we should all follow it. Does traditional Islam need to be liberalized? The answer is yes. And I could actually stop here and give the remainder of my time to my honorable opponent because he will need more than the allotted, his allotted 20 minutes to explain why his outdated and dysfunctional religious tradition does not need liberalization in the 21st century. Hijab, tall, dark and handsome like myself, says, yo, if you're saying that, you gotta give me proof in it. Now I'm saying. But where is the scientific evidence for liberalism? And you cannot even prove human rights because you cannot even prove its seedbed, epistemic seedbed, which is liberalism. Don't run away from the question. Hello darkness, my old friend. This guy Lars goes, I don't need to give proofs. I'm not a liberal and I don't even have the proofs. Liberalism is based on a fallacy, on something that cannot be proven. That, that's true. I don't need to give proofs of liberalism. It doesn't make any sense. First of all, I'm not a liberalist in the philosophical sense. And second, it is a sort of system that cannot be given proofs. Hijab goes, thank you very much. He actually agrees with me on all three of those points, which is, I think, a very good way to end the debate. But during the way, we had a few laughs because Lars tried to pull a sly one. You said I don't spend much time reading the Quran. So I, no, I, I don't think I've mentioned the Quran at all. With Hamza's sources. Our two. Minute 23. I do not spend much time on looking at the Quran. So, I, no, I, I don't think I've mentioned the Quran at all. Well, we can go and find out. <clears throat> and giving credit where credit is due, you could see Lars was hitting the YouTube videos to perfect his Arabic. Jihad fi sabil ala. So, fadl, you can believe whatever you want. Yeah, nice try mate, but it clearly didn't help, did it? So when Hijab stepped up to the mark. Tall, dark and handsome like myself. This guy could only look on in awe. There were of course a couple of beast moments in there. A completely outdated uh, uh, method. Then he mentioned democracy which is even, it's even older than Prophet Muhammad. So it's even more outdated, so it should be even more wrong in your understanding. And that's another issue with human rights. There are many issues with human rights. They focus too much on rights, what you're owed, and not enough on duties, what you owe. That's why you don't have any mother's rights. Just because something is cruel, it doesn't mean it's false. That's a fallacy, actually. That is liberalism in a nutshell. Sensi white man's, not even woman for the, for the most part, white man's sensibilities. Yeah, it's okay for a brother and sister to have sex, but cutting the hand of the thief. Uh, no, 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 that, that's... Come on, man. The 1948 Convention of Human Rights, the ones who had the, the biggest say in that were American white men. You say the same about animals? As long as you're not hurting the animals. But how can a dog consent when they can't even speak? I want to have sex with you, dog. How? How? 
The discrimination of women needs to be changed, as we can see here today, with the women relegated to the back. It says, why are women in the back and men in the front? This is a second wave feministic interrogation. Why should we go for a second wave feministic interrogation, not a third wave feministic interrogation? How do you know they're women? Have you asked for their pronouns? That wherever there is a ban on niqab, because of communication or the, the illa or the causative reasoning, is communication problems, then there should be a ban on blind people being communicators, judges, or otherwise arbitrators in those settings as well. Don't be a preacher. Be a teacher. FGM is practiced most by Western women because the way that the WHO defines FGM includes things like piercings, which we know now, Dr. Goulet is against, in the vagina, and labiaplasty. But despite all the roasting and toasting, hijab just couldn't get the guy's name right. Uh, Dave. Dr. Goul. Goulet. Goulet said that. It was Dr. Goul. Rodney. Dr. Goulet. Dr. Goulet. Jimbo. Which Lars Goulet. Steve. Being Goul. Lars Goulet. Dr. Goulet. Dave, yeah? Lars Goulet. Dr. Goulet comes up and- <laughs> I mean, it got so heated at one point, this guy had to make a run for it. 175 meters down uh, from the finish and we're here at the finish. Hijab just couldn't help himself plug his own literature. Actually, I've written a book on this, <laughs> which I want to give to you. <laughs> this is available online on Amazon. It's called Kalam Cosmological Arguments. I'll answer your question in detail, hopefully. But then Lars came back and he's like, yo, I've got my book as well, mate. Because I have also a book. It's actually my doctoral dissertation, a little bit thicker than <coughs> Mr. Hijab's book. It was a nice moment. They shared their books and there was mutual respect. Then it went back to the moderator. He was in charge of making this moment truly special, mate. His words were very important and integral at this moment in time. Did he step up to the mark? Good to see that love was in there. <sighs> All right, so we've reached the end. Both of them have hugged it out. It was clearly a beautiful moment of respect, of understanding by the end of the debate. It's going to go back to the moderator. He's had a chance to reflect over how we handled the previous situation and this time he needs to hold it together and take the debate into a nice finish. It has been a great honor for me today to hold host this great debate. It's just not your day today, is it mate? Goodbye.